Did you know the Unraid operating system no longer requires an array? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That means we can do some pretty high speed stuff, especially with something like the N1 NAS that can use all flash storage. So let's check out how to set up Unraid, but without an array. And while we're at it, we're gonna configure Handbrake so that way I can automatically encode some of my video game recordings. That way they'll be pre-transcoded to a different format before I import them into Final Cut Pro. Because this is marketed as an all flash storage device, we will be using two 2.5 inch SSDs and four NVMe drives. The N1 comes with the screws you will need to secure the SSDs to the included sleds that are both hidden here in the front behind the cover. With both sleds removed, we just need to grab a screwdriver and use the screws to secure the SSDs to their sleds. Once we have both SSDs in their sleds, just slide them into the bays and we are ready to mount the NVMe drives. To mount the NVMe drives, we need to turn over the unit and remove the two covers on both sides to reveal the M.2 slots for our drives. With the cover removed, we can easily install the NVMe drives into their slots as you can see here. Let's get the LinkStation N1 racked, powered, and connected to the network so we can begin setting it up. With our N1 NAS powered up and logged in, before we do anything with our array or our storage pools, the first thing I wanna make a note of is that we are actually on the Unraid 7 Beta 2. So eventually one day, the Unraid 7 release will allow you to have this feature by default. But for now, if you want access to it, you will have to be on the Beta 2 uh, software as it is available today. From here, the first thing I wanna do is click on dashboard and then I'm gonna click on edit. And then we're going to look for the link station N1, there it is. And then we're gonna click on the gear icon here. We're gonna change this to N1 NAS cause that's the name I would like. We'll change this to something cheeky. And then for a model, we'll just say link station N1 as well. There we go, hit apply. And littering and littering and all right, done. All right, back to the array. So what we're gonna do now is just scroll down here. We're gonna set this to none to get rid of all of the array devices. And then we're gonna add two pools. And you can see that we have our SSDs, our NVMe drives here. So the first pool we're gonna add, I'm just gonna call it storage. And we're gonna allow it to have two slots available for both of our SSDs, we'll assign the this SSD to the first slot and then this one to the second slot. And we're gonna click on storage. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to ZFS. And you can leave this as a mirror or stripe it. A stripe is essentially a RAID zero and a mirror is essentially a RAID one. It's up to you what you'd like to do. I'm gonna leave it as a mirror and we're gonna hit apply. We're not gonna change any other settings because it's not necessary on done and then we're going to add a second pool this one i'm going to call cache and i'm going to allow it to have four slots click on add and then we're going to add our nvme drives whoop one by one here there we go last but not least and then we're going to click on cache one more time we're going to change this to zfs as well and these different, you have the different options of essentially RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID Z1. So this RAID Z1, uh, you can think of having one parity, uh, RAID Z2, RAID Z3. You can choose whatever you'd like. I'm going to stick with the RAID Z1, maximizing the amount of storage space we have available. And a single parity, I think, is okay. So hit apply here. And done. All right, we've got our two pools created. So let's go ahead and click on start. Let's click on shares. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually move app data and all these other directories off of the array and into our cache or storage. So we're gonna set this one to storage. It doesn't matter what you do. You can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna click on apply and we'll wait for that. All right, hit done. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for domains. Now domains you might wanna have on cache because this is where all the VMs live. Uh, but that's kind of up to you what you want to do. I'm going to move it to uh, storage and then click on apply. Wait for this and then done. Okay. 
And then ISOs, uh, this one can live on cache or on storage. I'm gonna put on storage, apply, and done. And then last but not least, system. Uh, we're just gonna do the same thing here. Okay, and now we need to create some new shares. So the first share we're going to create is gonna be called watch. So this is where all of the videos are gonna live for handbrake. And we're gonna set that to be on the cache so we get super high speed writes and reads if we need. Uh, let's go ahead and ignore secondary storage and we're gonna leave all of the other stuff as default because we don't actually need it. And so we'll hit done, or add share, I'm sorry. Okay, and we'll go ahead and export this. Let's make everything public, yep, yep, everything looks good. Apply here. Now done, all right. And we need to add the other share. So the second share we're gonna add is gonna be called videos. And videos is where all of our videos are gonna be moved to when we're done, um, or when the when Handbrake is done encoding them or transcoding them. So we're gonna leave all this uh, as default and add share. You can change it if you want, of course. We're also gonna go ahead and export this. Yes, apply. And done. All right, so that's everything we need uh, here in the shares. Now let's head over to apps and we will install a plugin as well as Handbrake itself. But first let's go ahead and grab the Intel GPU top plugin. This one was created for us on our behalf by H7777. So thank you so much there. And this tool is useful because it will show us if the CPU or the more specifically the iGPU is actually doing any kind of encoding or any work at all. It'll show us what processes are appearing in the CPU. So that way we know that we are in fact uh, encoding with Handbrake on the CPU. So the next thing we're gonna do is search for Handbrake. And we have uh, this great option here from DJOS. So we'll go ahead and install this as well. Now there are gonna be a few things we're gonna to need to do in the Handbrake container to get it set up for us. So just go ahead and enable advanced view. And the first thing we're gonna do is add an extra parameter that's going to be dash dash device slash dev slash dry. So what this is gonna do is pass through card zero as well as renderer zero uh, to this container. So that's very important if you want to enable CPU encoding. For storage, uh, we're just gonna leave this as default. We don't need to change that, but for our watch directory, this part's important. So we'll go ahead and select the watch share that we created earlier. And then for the output directory, we're gonna put that into our video share that we created earlier. So we're gonna have to come back and edit this later. For now, we can just leave it at this by default. You could change this to any format you'd like, like MKV or MVA, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it at default as MP4, which is, will work for me. And I believe those are all the changes we need to make for now. So let's just go ahead and click apply and let this get installed. With that installed, we can go ahead and click on done here. And this should have already started the container for us, which is fine, although we're not done configuring it, so we can't just use it just yet. So let's open up the web UI. Let's get that out of the way. Now, as I mentioned before, we're gonna to wanna to create a custom preset. So what I like to do is just use an existing one. I'm just gonna go ahead and select Super HQ uh, 2160P. It doesn't actually matter what you use, uh, but this is a good starting point because I want the highest possible um, I guess options out of the box. And the first thing I'm gonna change here is actually scroll down and look for H264 Intel QSV. Now, I'm not sure exactly if there's a bug with the software or if there's another problem going on, but I cannot get H265 Intel QSV to work. And that is why I am using H264 Intel QSV. It could be a problem with the N1, I'm sorry, the N5105 itself, um, that like as in that generation of CPUs from Intel, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but this definitely works. So we've made that change. I've changed the frame rate the same as source. So anything we drop in there, if it's 30 frames, 60 frames, 144 frames, it'll just try and match that as best as it can. And then we're gonna hit uh, 
save preset here and we're gonna give it the name QSV, something short, sweet, and simple. And we're gonna save it under the uh, category of general and we're also just gonna set the default uh, preset as well. And we'll go ahead and click on save. And now that's our default and all we have to do is add general QSV to handbrake and we're good to go. All right, and let's go ahead and stop it as well. Now let's go back in and edit. Scroll down here where it says automatic video converter preset. It says general very fast already. We're gonna change this to QSV. And just so you aware, let's say that you did want to use one in another category. You could put the category and then the name of it, whatever it, whatever the full name of it is right there. So that's, that's basically how I know. So the category in this case is gonna be general and QSV is where we have it. So let's go ahead and click on apply. That's gonna update this for us. We're gonna hit done. And now for the next part. Now there's just one more thing we need to do and I promise it's not that hard but, and we're gonna do it together. All we need to do is write this one command so we can give our container some more options so that way it can do all of the encoding it needs to do with relative ease. So it looks like this, oops, two, and we'll put that in two slash boot. You can tab this out too, by the way, if you're unsure of where to put it, mod probe dot D, and then we need to name the file. So the name of the file that we're gonna make is gonna be i915.conf. We'll press enter, and then let's simply just verify that file that we created to make sure that we put that one tiny little piece of code into that configuration file that we just created. And it's there, so we are good to go. Let's type on exit to close that window. And we need to also stop our array, well, actually our pools in this case, shut down and reboot, unraid, and we should be good to go from here for everything to work. And we'll do a quick test as soon as this thing is rebooted. Now that we're done with that, let's switch over to the gaming PC. So let's go ahead and go to this PC. And what we're gonna do now on Windows 11 is we're gonna map a network drive. So we'll just say Z, that's fine, slash last server, 192.168.8.130. Slash watch. All right, and we'll say finish. Okay, it popped right up, so I think that's working. And then we need to add another network location. So map network drive. Uh, y is good, so we'll do the same thing 192.168.8.130, because that's the IP address of my server. And we did videos. Uh oh, videos. Videos, videos, videos. Did I spell that wrong? <laughs> I think I spelled that wrong. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that works. That's one way to spell videos. Today I learned videos. Yeah, I spelled that wrong. Okay, well, uh, ignore the typographical error there. We should be good. So now let's bring over OBS because that's what I'll be using to record. Let's go to settings. Output, recording, browse, uh, this PC. And so we're gonna drop all of our new videos into the watch folder. So we'll select that. So any new folder that, or any new video we create will get dropped in there. Once we're done recording, it'll get encoded and then moved into the videos folder. And you can see that's currently an MKV and that'll get converted over to an MP4 when we're all said and done. So click on apply, okay. Let's move this out of the way because we no longer need it. And let's start playing some games. Okay, so we have started the recording as you can see here. So let's move OBS out of the way. And also let us just open up our watch folder just to see what's inside. So you can see that we have 2024.08, blah, 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 blah in here. So that is definitely there. And if we bring up Intel GPU top, currently nothing is happening, which is good. We don't want to see anything happening. So let's move this back out of the way. And uh, let's just run around for just a, the briefest of moments uh, to give the uh, 
give us some time to record something so we have something to convert. Now, we're not going to record too, too long. In fact, I'll probably stop right now after this just because we don't need minutes and minutes of gameplay. We only need a few seconds if that just as a proof of concept. All right, I think that this is a good enough spot. We've recorded plenty, I would say, so let's bring up OBS and hit so just to quickly prove that it's working, so we're using about 30, 44% of the CPU to do the encoding. We see handbrake CLI here. So that is definitely using the handbrake um, container to do the encoding, which is good. This is what we want to see right here. This is perfect. So let's get this out of the way for now and just take a quick look at the dashboard as well. And whoop, whoop. And the dashboard itself, if I can get this here, is using almost 100%, but that's okay. Um, that's okay to see. We all, What we really care about here is that it is, in fact, using the iGPU, which is, is definitely this process here. Um, yes, it is CPU intensive, but the, the Link Station N1 should be more than capable of handling this plus other loads. Okay, with the video done, we can now look at it real quick. And what's cool about this is, and the whole reason why I want to convert it to MP4 is because it just works better with Final Cut Pro. So if I were to do any sort of video recordings, it being in uh, MP4 is the best format for me. And there we go, I couldn't get to the edge. So let's just quickly review this. Looks like we have audio, that's good. And that looks pretty dang good if I had to say so myself. Wow, that is very nice. It's great to see how flexible Unraid is and how we can leverage the NVMe and SSD drives without using the array and also just show off the power of the Link Station N1 because Unraid allows us to pass through the integrated graphics processor on the CPU to our container, which is really cool. Like we were able to leverage it and you know, slap it with a 2560 by 1440p video and it just encoded that in pretty much no time at all. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.